Well, hello, hello. Welcome to Rouhani Talks. And today I have Don Gino Chakruna with me. And today's question we're going to talk about is what is a shaman? Now, Don Gino is a Peruvian shaman, and uh, we have him here today. We're very lucky to have him. So we're going to just bring him in. Don Gino, how are you doing? I'm very well, Fashal. Thank you for your invitation. You're welcome. And, uh, good day to everybody that is watching. So let's get into that question. What is a shaman? Well, that is a very big, big question. <laughs> but uh, I will do my best. Uh, the word shaman, we have to start with the word shaman. The word shaman is uh, not Peruvian. It's a derivation of an original word, word comprised by two words, shaman originated in Siberia, in the Tingu, Tungus tribe. And uh, Satman means literally the one who knows. And when I am asked this, I start there because uh, the shaman in every tribal shamanic community was mainly the elder, most of the times. And the more strong, the wiser. And in the tribal mode, if you ask uh, the one who knows, you will say the one who knows what? Well, the answer might be the one who knew how to bridge himself to the other realms, the spiritual realm, the one who knew to foresee what was coming in the community. You can say maybe he knew because he was the elder when was going to be a good uh, rainy season so they can plant or maybe when they would be having some issues with the neighbor tribe being attacked or how to heal a little boy if he was beaten by a snake or a spider whatever so in reality in those times the shaman was much more that uh, what is known now uh, people that serve medicine, name it uh, ayahuasca, cambo, iboga. I think that uh, it's misused. In Peru, we mainly use curandero, healer. Uh, in the end, this probably has a, a, a much bigger uh, meaning. Uh, it's uh, the pacos embrace the whole uh, <clears throat> levels of, of shamans or healers uh, in the Andes. We have the Pampa Misayo that has certain powers or certain level of knowledge. And then you have the Alto Misayo with much more power that could even have a certain influence in the weather. Same as in the Native Americans of, of uh, U United States or, or America, North America, let's say, because they could uh, make a, a dance for the rain and suddenly it will start raining. So to wrap it up, uh, in my view, the shaman has four legs, like a table. And the first leg would be the warrior. In the old days, the shaman was also a warrior, the strongest in the community. And uh, the wars are to be fight in ceremony and outside ceremony. Inside ceremony is a big fight. Man, most of the times, these uh, dark energies come after the shaman because they know the shaman will come after them. And uh, uh, sorry for that. And. Uh, and then the foreseer, the one that could see beyond, as I explained, maybe in those times, they needed really to plan when to harvest, when to plant. So the elder was the one who knew because he was there much uh, earlier. The one that could foresee events. And then you have the maestro, again, because wisdom comes with age he will be the one to teach the community the values how to behave 
uh, the knowledge of the plants or the healing knowledge. And then you have the healer itself who knew about the plants and other tools to heal the community. So that was the shaman in those days, four strong legs, four pillars, which I really don't know if there are any more on these days. Uh -huh. I don't call myself a shaman. I'm just an old, an old uh, little wise man with a little knowledge maybe. I know that there is healing in one of my legs, wisdom maybe a little bit. Foreseeing today is much different than in those days. You can foresee what is coming in the whole world uh, of all the turbulence, especially now. Mm -hmm. And the warrior, for sure, I fight a lot of wars in the <laughs> ceremonies. <laughs> but who knows, I may not have not even one leg. I'm not the one to say. <laughs> so anyway. I think the general idea or conception here in, in in first usually first world countries is they think that shaman is the one who works with ayahuasca. Yeah. But I think after hearing you and through my own uh, research, shaman is just a general name, someone who knows, let's say, different medicines or spirituality, who knows how to work with the spirits, how to work with the spirits of the plants. And then I think you were touching that point that the one who works with ayahuasca will be ayahuascaro. And I think there is another name for someone who works with tobacco. No, tabacero. Tabacero. Yeah, well, the thing is that the shaman, if, even if they use plants, some shamans just go in trance by drumming, some others by chanting, some others with the tobacco. Or whatever way they use, they know the map to go in other realms because they have gone so many times that they kind of, even, even though the ceremony can be totally different, they know the realms and how to behave and how to bridge himself and contact his allies, recognize dark entities against white entities because sometimes dark entities play the white ones also up there. So it's very delicate. It's a knowledge to know the path and once you know the past for yourself, because you've, gone, you've be, been there so many times, you can bridge other people with you in these realms safely and then bring them back. I also remember, I think from one of our previous talks that uh, in back in the day, there used to be just a few shamans, like even in a village or in a community, there will be only one shaman. But nowadays there are shamans everywhere, you know. Um, yeah. And as you mentioned, it's hard to find the traditional shamans. They're not there anymore. So my question to regarding this topic is also, was shaman a very popular person back in the days, let's say 100 years ago, or was he just a poor guy sitting in a hut who knew the knowledge? In my view, uh, the shaman was chosen by the medicine that he was uh, journeying with, or when he would go in trance, sometimes by nature, by Pachamama, like in the Andes. In the Andes, you have these little kids going uh, to take the cattle to raise, and it's very, very, very big storms with thunders and lightning, and some of them are hit in one year, maybe two, three. They die, but one doesn't die. It is said that he gets three lightnings. One splits him apart, dies, second one, Splits him apart, and the second one, the third one, puts him together and give him life again. So uh, that kid is put under the wing of an elder during his whole life. As you mentioned, nowadays anybody who works with ayahuasca, iboga, mushroom, San Pedro, you name it, is a shaman. And in my view, it is not so. Uh, 
I think you can say he's a good maestro Yawaskero, he's a very good maestro Wachumero, he's a very good maestro with, with the Boga. Uh, but beyond that, uh, where are the other legs? Where is the warrior? Where is the healer, the maestro, the foreseer? I think a chaman is more known uh, outside ceremony than inside. Because if you have a very, a very strong medicine, Anybody can sit in front and serve the medicine, learn two or three songs, and wow, he's a good shaman. But there is a lot of risks. And uh, regarding uh, the, your question of in the old times, well, I was not there 100 years ago, but uh, for transmission of uh, knowledge, uh, I know the shaman was, uh, it was a very tough word. A lot of sacrifice, mm -hmm. a lot of letting go of many things and just dedicated to this. And he was taken care of by the community. Like the maestros, in whatever they were maestros, they were taken care and they were uh, given food, maybe a little house in, in the corner of the village. They were always isolated, clothed, money was not involved. But still, they got something, and they were just dedicated for that, to solve yeah. the community problems, social problems, to foresee any events that would come to the community for divination, for healing. Uh, nowadays, that has changed. And as you said, before you would go to a community, you ask who is the shaman in the Amazon, and they will all say, yeah, the old man in the corner. With the chairman, but now you go and 20 kids raise their hands. I am the chairman, I'm the chairman, I'm the chairman. And even when I go abroad, because I travel a lot already for seven years doing my work, I always say, like, you trip and you pick up a stone, and then you go, Oh, three shamans under the sun, <laughs> they're everywhere, and uh, it's okay, it's, it's okay, and it's not okay. It's okay in, in regard that we need more people really knowing the work to bring these medicines, whatever the medicine is, abroad. Or I think we're gonna, that's, that's a really good point where we're going right now. And I think that rings a bell about what's Neo Shaman. So we're gonna touch that in the next video. Thank Very you, well. Gino. Once again, you explained what is shaman <laughs> really, really well. And I'm really excited to get into the next question. And viewers, uh, thank you for joining us. And thank if you, you have not watched our other videos, uh, there are links over here. Uh, go and watch the other videos about uh, ayahuasca or plant medicine. And the next question we are going to talk about is uh, who is a neo shaman or what is a neo shaman. So see you in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Mahizan.